Tom here from Lawrence Systems. It is July of 2020. That is relevant because I'm gonna talk about a project we did back in 2018. Now I'm not a clickbait person, so the project works and all that's wonderful. That's, um, uh, there you go. Now you don't have to watch the rest of the video or you could. Anyways, we installed this project and I wanted to do a follow-up because I think follow-up is important because after you install almost 300 access points, did they work? What does it look like? Is the client still happy or does the client hate you because you installed a product that doesn't work well and he's had a million problems, et cetera, et cetera. And what does it look like? How does 2000 users, are they happy? Um, those are all important questions and we're going to jump into them right after this. If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now, back to our content. Now, we're gonna start here and I know a lot of people are going to be immediately disappointed in the fact that I can't live show all their controllers, screenshots, etc. And the reason why is the same reason we can't film there. We do have permission to mention um, all this, and I got permission to log into the dashboard and show this, but this is hosted all at the client. The client can't be named because of compliance, and their IT department loves us, but they're people that uh, sit in a C-suite said, you know, we don't like talking about our hardware. We don't like pictures. We don't like anyone mentioning our name and things. That would make us happy if you never mentioned it. And we said, that's fine. We actually uh, deal with this quite a bit with clients. Um, they hire us for projects that they found us on YouTube, which is exactly how we got this job. But they also then go back and say, you know, we'd like to not be mentioned because we don't like people knowing our, any of our infrastructure. It makes our uh, legal team nervous and we don't want to deal with it. Fair enough, we're completely complying. But I can share that we have 304 devices, 292 wireless, wired uh, 12, long-term support nine. Now, because we replaced um, a bunch of these unifies that were sold to them as hardware as a service, and when we sh did the swap, some didn't get swapped because they didn't, the hardware as a service company that sold them this didn't want them back. So that's how we left a few in place. So this was a complete swap and replace. Now, a little quick background. How we got this job was, they were searching YouTube videos, looking at the Unify product line because they happen to have it, but it was sold to them as hardware as a service. If you're not familiar with that type of business model, basically you pay forever for the hardware. So as an IT company, they come in and they charge you a monthly yearly contract fee to install everything. And then you keep infinitely leasing it and they give you full service and support and blah, blah, blah for a fee. But then they changed uh, their internal IT team. They got a new leader who's got a calculator and said, it only takes six months to pay for the entire hardware as a service. We can, we've been paying this for years, well, a couple years because it was older AP equipment. And in six months time is the return on investment of putting and swapping it and self-hosting and owning it all internally. So that's how this project came to be. And that's how we end up with a few of them that are long-term because they didn't swap them, but they still perfectly work fine. Now they are using Unify 48 port PoE switches. So that's what's installed for there and then they're of varying degrees, so different IDF rooms. And overall, if you can't tell from this picture here, there's a technically uh, 12 different rooms that these were installed in. This goes across several buildings. Each building is multi-floor. The back hall between each device is fiber. So they have fiber because of the distance of the buildings uh, with little, you know, the standard little SFP fiber converter. So, but how does it work and how'd the install go? So obviously, like I said, we can't film there, so there's no photos or anything like that. But because this was a swap in place from hardware as a service, we didn't have to replan their Wi-Fi network. We just had to basically go in there and swap and replace. So they already had the ceiling mounts and things like that, but they were the really old um, access points. Actually, they were the old 2.4 gigahertz, not even five. So we installed the UAP HD. So they decided that if they were gonna go with something, wanted to go with something pretty solid with uh, really, you know, these support high density, a much higher density than they actually needed, but they said, hey, if we're gonna do all this, and the ROI, even with these ones, was still that six months, because we could have went with a cheaper access point uh, that saved them a little bit more money, but um, they said, 
even at six months, are able to sell it to the management. And why not go, if you're going to go through the trouble of replacing it, because obviously there's a reasonable labor cost in this. Now, the switches, the previous hardware as a service company had, were not unified. They had kind of a mix match of different switches that they did want back. So our project was to come in there, get the controller set up. They didn't have an on-site controller. The hardware as a service company managed everything off-site. They wanted to internally manage it, not pay license fees, and pay us to do the labor because their team wasn't big enough to uh, knock the, out a running network. Because by the way, downtime had to be at a minimum. This place operates essentially 24 seven. Uh, so the swap and replace was kind of all done in parallel with the um, other company stuff as we were swapping and replacing. So it's kind of tricky to do. It required a lot of coordination with my team, but that project, it went really well. The client was really happy. We actually accomplished this in all of three days. We swapped out all the equipment, all the infrastructure, and got it all up and running. All right, but what happened? So out of, and they actually, um, the client themselves bought the hardware and we did, we provided the design engineering and labor for this project. And we did, they did have us buy the switches because they wanted us to take care of that part. Um, and, but they bought all of these, which was actually the bigger ticket item buying 300 UAP HDs. Out of the box, one single UAP HD had failed. Like it just didn't work. We plugged it in, no lights, no nothing, just one, one. That was it. Armated to unify, and we've armated things in the past, and um, no problem. They shipped it back to them uh, at a later date. But we didn't need all 300. That we purposely bought a couple extra in case there was any issues, and there was only one had an issue. Next part is, what do they look like? So this was December of 2018. What do they look like in July of 2020? Have they survived firmware updates, controller updates, etc.? A couple things that I'm going to talk about first. One. Here is a video that I'll leave a link to in the description below. Large Unify installs how to tune the controller for high number of devices. Important aspect is that you have the controller tuned for a high number of devices. I made sure I had um, all the settings in there. Um, so that was an important first step. Second, make sure you have enough RAM. The only thing they've had to do is add more memory because the subsequent versions of the controller update and their internal IT team has been pretty good about keeping up to date uh, in updating to new versions of the controller software. Uh, the newer controller seems to use a little bit more memory than the previous one once you have this number of devices. They bumped it up uh, recently to 16 gigs of RAM and it solved some little quirkiness that they were experiencing with the dashboard. But these, the users are thrilled. They work. They haven't had any hangups. They haven't had any hiccups. They've all, well, we haven't been out to even swap a single one. Every one of these is still working. And as they should be. I think this is important. Uh, I've seen people tell me that they've seen high failure rates. I have not when it comes to the access points. It is extremely rare. And we've done quite a few projects uh, with these access points. Well, not just these ones, the whole lineup of access points, uh, even some outdoor ones, which I plan to do a follow up on that we installed like four years ago that are still outside and are still working perfectly fine and don't have any issues. So the overall, no problems on any access points. What about the switches? The only problem we've run into with the switches is we had one SFP module go bad. And it wasn't on the switch, it was the module itself for the fiber connector. Um, we had to swap it. It just was flaky. It would randomly, maybe once a week, just decide to down the switch. and But it, restarting the switch would do it. And we weren't sure where the problem was. And we've tracked it down to being that. It was like, first we thought maybe a bad switch, but turned out it wasn't. So all the switches still installed, still where they are from December of 2018 to July of 2020, all working fine. And as you've seen from the screenshot over here, some of these switches have quite a few access points plugged into them. Now we did get them the larger, uh, higher wattage 48 port switch, which is important because uh, you want to make sure that you, you always want to over spec rather than under spec when you have these on there. But the whole project as, I, as I'm doing this follow up, like I said, has not had issues. I just want to, you know, drill this home a little bit because it seems like a lot of people mention what it won't work. And one of the projects we did at the beginning of the year that I had uh, brought up was this one I can leave a link to. It says project installing 52 Unify wireless access points for a warehouse. And there's a lot of people that says, oh, I've had so many failures. It doesn't work, it, et cetera, et cetera. Problems, haters, haters, all caps on. And that's fine. Um, I don't know necessarily if these YouTube commenters are really people who installed Unify or didn't do any RTFM and just uh, threw it up there and didn't actually tune it and see if it worked. Now, I will mention they do have, uh, just because someone's going to ask, it is uh, head-ended by a XG7100, which is a NetGate PFSense um, box, is the head-end of this particular network. Uh, we did not go with the Unify 
for the head end of the network in terms of firewall router. Um, I've got a video where I talk about some of the shortcomings, and one of them is the fact that they do have a block of IP addresses, lots of port forwards, a lot of rules that are in place for uh, VPN and part of the network access and a lot of complexities they have for the remote access. Uh, the PFSense handles that perfectly fine. I will be doing some follow-up videos on an outdoor project and one on this project here. Because not only this project that I uh, published on February of 2020, um, this project went so well for the client. This was actually the first one we did for them. They were so happy with this one, we did several more. Uh, we've done a number of buildings. We're working on a few more buildings for them. Unfortunately, that was the only one I can film in. The other buildings are actively in use. And well, they prefer if I probably didn't film there and wandered around, which is too bad. So it would have been pretty cool to do. Uh, but either way, that project works very well. And so do the other ones. But uh, these are important to me that we do some of these follow-ups because you know you want to know what does it look like uh, so many some period of time later is the client happy and their IT team I asked permission they let me take these screenshots and they said Tom we're happy with it we you know we'd like to see you get more business even though you can't use our name in it because well you know, people in the C-suite said, we don't like talking about things publicly or having your name uh, tied to some YouTube guy, even though they admit that's also how they found us was on YouTube. But hey, uh, I'm cool with that. Um, so that's my story. And there you go. Hopefully that's helpful to you if you want to know uh, a little bit more about the longevity of the unified ecosystem. Uh, we're happy with it. And this is why we continue to sell it and are continuing to do project after project with these devices. Uh, the access points and switches by them to me are just they, they nailed it. They do a great job for um, the use cases that we have in here. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.